Hello everyone and welcome to another News Coulomb video and another Ford Ranger electric update. So I have a lot of updates actually to make uh, on the Ford Ranger electric project. A lot of things that I'm doing. You know, I have enough things to do right now <laughs> that I can shake a stick and, and, you know, hit at least half a dozen things that I'm working on. Right now, though, my sort of stretch goal, this is uh, still early in August. Right now, my stretch goal is to see if I can get the Ford Ranger Electric, at least the 1999, uh, the NIM one, the one that doesn't have all of the rust damage, uh, up and running and ready to go in time to drive it down to San Diego for fully charged live. Now, uh, that's a over a 600 mile drive for me. So if I can get a 20 plus year old uh, electric pickup truck able to make that journey uh, reasonably, uh, you know, first step is just getting it up and running. Uh, but you know, that gives me about four to five weeks to finish this build. I think I have everything I need. Uh, it's just a matter of having the time um, and troubleshooting and making sure everything gets put into place. Uh, one of the things that I ended up doing was pulling uh, the original charger and I thought, yeah, I don't have a whole lot of time to waste on stuff like this, but um, you know, just doing a teardown of this charger and just kind of seeing what's on the inside because this is the same charging standard. So you could see, say this is sort of like the father of, of the AC charging unit that Tesla was using in their cars. Of course, it also uh, cascaded down into all of the uh, subsequent automakers who are using level two onboarding, uh, whether it be the Nissan Leaf, uh, the various GM electric products, the plug-in hybrids, most of them use an AC onboard charger something like this that converts AC into DC for the battery. This one was set up for NIM. Now what I do not know, and this has a part number on the top of it, what I do not know is if this is the same charger that is used in the lead acid uh, Ford Ranger Electric. As far as I understand it, they're both constant current, constant voltage, the CC CV that you see so common for all of these different battery charging profiles. But the NIM Ford Ranger Electric has a, a, what's called an independent observer module that actually kind of controls this charger. Additionally, uh, there's different heat requirements, different power requirements, cycling requirements for, for NIM. So what I don't know is how much of a difference that makes in terms of the actual programming of this charger or whether they could be identical part numbers, both just CC, CV, 40 amp, 240 volt chargers uh, with the independent observer module that controls some of the nuances of charging NIM. But maybe that's an investigation for another day. One of the reasons to to switch these out in, in case you're asking why I pulled uh, this big, uh, <laughs> big honking charger out of the front. No, it's not to, to create space for frunk though. Uh, it, it's, it's almost there. Uh, the problem with this original Ford charger, this 240 volt, 40 amp charger is that it only works on 240 volts. So if you do happen to want to plug in on 120 volt in an emergency, it's your only option this won't even work. And then of course, you know, there is the aspect of whether this integrates well enough because I've read some things that say that the Ford Ranger programming, the independent observer module, all of that might not actually allow it to charge more than about 30 amp hours at a sitting. I'm putting in a 280 amp hour battery, right? So that there's no, there's no way that this would be able to support it if it limited that sort of cycle. Now, what I'm replacing it with is, is this is a Valio Siemens. It's currently, um, not, uh, in stock anymore. I actually wanted an Elcon, uh, initially, uh, but this one is a CAN bus, uh, controlled charger. It's liquid cooled. These are the same power. And it sort of gives you an idea of, yes, there's been a significant improvement in um, charging and in power and design and circuitry. Uh, and of course, this one can accept both 120 uh, volt and 240 volt. Uh, but because it's liquid cooling, it's a lot, a lot smaller, a lot more compact. This one is air cooled. There's a big fan underneath um, 
probably pull that when we tear it down uh, just to see what's inside of it. Um, but that adds volume. But just overall, this is a much bigger charger. And I'm not exactly sure who made this. I, I have my suspicions that this is an Eaton charger, but it's not branded as that. Uh, and then one of the other reasons I kind of want to tear into this a little bit has to do with these plugs. Um, I don't know what all of these plugs do. I don't know that I'm going to have to reuse any of the connections from here, uh, but some of these feed directly into the battery energy control module. Some of them feed into the rest of the system, possibly trigger the DC to DC converter to turn on. Uh, some of them might actually be a constant live 12 volt. So those are all nice things that I should be able to tap into if I want to, but I have to be able to identify them first. And even the wiring diagram uh, for the Ford Ranger Electric is not clear because it, it doesn't seem to differentiate between the postal carrier Ford built, the NIM version of the Ford Ranger Electric, and the lead acid. So uh, just I'm, I'm just having a little bit of fun here. I am going to need this as templating too. Um, I'm going to be uh, fabricating a bracket. Uh, I'm still waiting on a part for that uh, that will allow me to mount this along with all of the other equipment that mounted onto the top of here. So um, without further ado though, um, let's just tear into this thing and, and see what the guts are. All right, first thing is uh, I'm going to take this uh, charger and put it outside of the firing line. Don't want to get it uh, too damaged. I'll probably end up going a deeper dive into into the Valio Siemens charger in the future. So one of the things is you'll notice I have these on bricks and or on uh, blocks of wood and the reason for that is this fan array here um, really just doesn't uh, uh, doesn't allow it to, to sit level. So what I think I might do is actually just uh, pull this fan from the underside first, and then maybe we can set it level. These are what they call like security or tamper proof uh, hex heads. So they're a little hole in them. So you can like, I've seen people drill them out, knock them out. I would rather just, have a set on hand. Um, I think these were 25s. Uh, yeah, so I, I haven't even tried to crack into this yet. I don't know how much it is, but I'm going to try to take this, this plate off here. I'm not really worried about any sort of capacitance in this. This is technically high voltage. Uh, this end wire here, this feeds directly into the high voltage junction box. Um, this is the the AC feed that comes in. These other two are the ones that I don't really have a good read on what they are. And this might actually be from the era of uh, Ford where uh, Sandy Monroe was working there. So I can totally get his, his phobia with fasteners. So now this, <laughs> that was, <laughs> gotta use a power tool for that. I am the power tool. So that's just this uh, little gland um, fitting. Uh, wow, this is like pulling out alien guts. All right, let's see. I don't know that I need to preserve anything here. Oh, 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 we have, we have a badge here. EBM Industries. So that could just be, ugh, could just be for the, for the fan, um, steel blades, kids, watch out. All right, I'm actually, huh, trying to decide where I want to cut this because I, I do want to cut it. Basically, inside or outside of the charger. I think I'm going to cut it outside. All right, so. Fan down, fan down. This should now sit flat. And I, I guess maybe the other thing I should have mentioned is the weight difference. This is significantly heavier than this uh, Valio Siemens, which I can basically just 
manhandle, even off-handed this, I don't know, three, four times the weight probably. Oh my goodness, Sandy Monroe was right. Sandy Monroe was right. This can't be ergonomic. Um, one of the things too is uh, I am gonna be using the top portion of this for a profile for the mounting bracket that's going to replace it. So I do wanna keep that around. Four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty fasteners. Sandy, eat your heart out. Alright. Now I don't know if this is maybe something else that's gonna mount on there or keep it keep it on there. So there's a guide clip. Oh, <laughs> All right, so that was a satisfying little clip. Dun, 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 dun. Actually, this is very light. Wow, all aluminum. All right, so what do we got in here? It smells like electronics. It's actually got a Ford part number on the inside and Ford wiring on the inside. I wonder if Ford actually built this charger internally. All right, well, here we have um, the inside. Uh, let's see. Yeah, like I said, here, here we have Ford part numbers, um, Ford stickers. made in Mexico, it's definitely a Ford. Um, no, all j joking aside. Um, yeah, this is, this is crazy. Look at the, look at the capacitors on that. Moving the camera to get a better view. Um, so as you can see, these are the, the main high voltage power lines out. Um, this is negative, white is negative, orange is positive. Um, in fact, it might even, Oh, okay. I don't know. So, uh, anybody who's, uh, uh, you know, really good with electronics could probably look at this and tell me more about this layout, maybe how things have gotten, um, smaller. <laughs> um, but these are the wires that I really don't know necessarily what they are. So, oh, nice. There's a sealant there. Um, yeah, like I said, this this tray is tray light. Um, sorry, French friends. Um, yeah, just a little uh, interior fan. Actually, <laughs> that's a 230 volt fan. So it looks like this is running without um, any sort of conversion or no, um, 12 volt power in. Let's see. Yeah. So if I had to guess then this, this is a 12 volt wire, but where is it coming from? Like, like the power, the power feed. So I, I would want to trace which ones of these. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Look, look, that's, that pin is is the 12 volt so 
I've identified which one of th this is kind of why I did this. So I've identified which one of these and I can find the corresponding one under the hood. Um, yeah, this is the AC line in. So um, I'm guessing they're coming out over here with this transformer. Uh, <laughs> I haven't seen a transformer like that since oh, the 90s. All right. And again, look for Ford part numbers. So, um, yeah, this is the IGBTs. So anyway, I mean, yeah, this is, this is a inside look into, uh, what's going on in a, in an original 20 year old, 20 plus year old Ford Ranger electric, um, level two AC onboard charger, 40 amp, 240 volts. Um, like I said, I'd love to hear uh, your feedback. Um, see, I'm seeing more of this line goes in here. Um, it, for those of you who really are, um, you know, well versed in electronics, maybe, maybe you could look at a schematic for this or something and, and answer some questions and comments, or um, you know, just leave your comments in the video. Just I'd love to hear what you think about it. Um, like I said, this is amazing that. 20, 25 years have gone by and the, the technology hasn't really changed all that much. Just maybe gotten smaller, more compact, a little bit more efficient. Um, but yeah, like I said, I'd love to hear, love to hear what you think. Um, yeah, if you uh, enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. It really helps out, helps out the channel. And uh, yeah, I'm going to try to get back to work now, now that I... <laughs> at least know one thing, right? 12 volts. So that's good to know. All right. Thank you for watching.